Ready to escape into a world of books and pixels? What is up, YouTube? Today we are going to be reading Gordon the Big Engine. Our story stops today will be... Off the Rails, Leaves, Down the Mine, and Paint Pots and Queens. Dear Jan... No, not Jan. Dear Ian, my bad. You asked for a book about Gordon. Here he is. Gordon has been naughty, and Sir Topham Hat was stern with him. Gordon has now learned his lesson and is a really useful engine. The offer. Off the rails. Gordon was resting in a siding. Peep, peep, peep. Hello, fat face, whistled Henry. What cheeks, spluttered Gordon. That Henry is too big for his wheels. Fancy speaking to me like that. Me, he went on, wetting off steam. Me, who has never had an accident. Aren't jammed whistles and burst safety valves accidents? asked Percy innocently. No, indeed, said Gordon huffily. High spirits. Might happen to any engine, but to come off the rails. Well, I ask you, is it right? Is it decent? A few days later, it was Henry's turn to take the express. Gordon watched him getting ready. Be careful, Henry. He said, you're not pulling the flying kipper now. Mind you keep on the rails today. Henry snorted away. Gordon yawned and went to sleep. But he didn't sleep long. Wake up, Gordon, said his driver. A special train's coming and where to pull it? Gordon opened his eyes. Is it coaches or freight? Freight, said his driver. Freight, said Gordon crossly. Pah! They lit Gordon's fire and oiled him ready for the run. The fire was sulky and wouldn't burn. But they couldn't wait, so Edward pushed him to the turntable to get him facing the right way. I won't go, I won't go, grumbled Gordon. Don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Edward. Gordon tried hard, but he couldn't stop himself from being moved. At last he was on the turntable. Edward was un uncoupled and backed away, and Gordon's driver and fireman jumped down to turn him around. The movement had shaken Gordon's fire. It was now burning nicely and making steam. Gordon was cross and didn't care what he did. He waited till the turbo was half. Bleh. He waited till the table was halfway round. I'll show them. I'll show them. He hissed and moved slowly forward. He only meant to go a little way, just far enough to jam the table and stop it turning, as he had done once before. But he couldn't stop himself and slithered down the embankment. He settled in a ditch. Whoosh! He hissed as his wheels churned the mud. Get me out! Get me out! Not a hope," said his driver and fireman. "You. You're stuck, you silly great engine. Don't you understand that? They telephoned Sir Topham Hat. So Gordon didn't want to take the special and ran into a ditch, he answered from his office. What's that, you say? The special's waiting? Tell Edward to take it, please. And Gordon? Oh, leave him where he is. We haven't had, and we haven't time to bother with him now. A family of toads croaked. And croaked crossly at Gordon as he lay in the mud. On the other side of the ditch, some little boys were chattering. Gee, doesn't he look silly? They'll never get him out. They began the saying, Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch, all on a Monday morning. The school bell rang, and still singing, they ran down the road. Pah, said Gordon, and blew away three tadpoles and an inquisitive newt. Gordon lay in the ditch all day. Oh dear, he thought, I shall never get out. But that evening, they brought floodlights. Then, with powerful jacks, they lifted Gordon and made a road of sleepers under his wheels to keep him from the mud. Strong wire ropes were fastened to his back end. And James and Henry, pulling hard, at least, and at last, managed to bring him to the rails. That night, Gordon crawled home, a sadder and wiser engine. Leaves. Two men were cleaning Gordon. Mind my eye, Gordon grumbled. Shut it, silly. Did you ever see such mud birds? No, I never, Alf. You ought to be ashamed. Gordon giving us extra work. The hosing and scrubbing stopped. Gordon opened one eye but shut it quickly. Wake up, and wake up, Gordon, said the top of that sternly, and listen to me. You will pull no more coaches till you are a really useful engine. So Gordon had to spend his time pulling freight cars. Goods try, and... Goods trains, goods trains, he muttered. He felt his position deeply. That's for you, and you, and you, Gordon said crossly. Oh, 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 screamed the freight cars as he shunted them about in the yard. Freight cars will be freight cars, said James, watching him. They won't with me, snorted Gordon. I'll teach them. Go on, and another freight car scurried away. They tried to push me down the hill this morning, Gordon explained. It's slippery there. You'll probably need some help. 
I don't need help on hills, said James Huffley. Gordon laughed and got ready for his next train. James went away to take the express. Slippery hills, indeed, he snorted. I don't need help. Come on, come on, he puffed. All in good time, all in good time, grumbled the coaches. The train was soon running nicely, but a distant signal checked them close to Gordon's Hill. Gordon's Hill used to be bleak and bare. Strong winds from the sea had made it hard to climb. Trees were planted to give shelter, and in summer, the trains run through a leafy avenue. Now autumn had come, and dead leaves fell. The wind usually puffed them away, but today rain had made them heavy, and they did not move. The home signal showed clear, and James began to go faster. He started to climb the hill. I'll do it! I'll do it! He puffed confidently. Halfway up, halfway up, he was not so sure. I must do it! I must do it! He panted desperately. But try as he would, his wheels slipped on the leaves, and he couldn't pull the train at all. What's the matter? What's the matter? He gasped. Steady, old boy. Steady, soothed his driver. His fireman put sand on the rails to help him grip, but James's wheels spun so fast that they only ground the sand and leaves to slippery mud, making things worse than before. The train slowly stopped. Then... Help, 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 whistled James, for though his wheels were turning forward, the heavy coaches were pulling him backwards. The whole train started slipping down the hill. His driver shut off steam and carefully put on the brakes and skillfully stopped the train. Woo, he sat down and mopped his face. I've never known that to happen before. I have, said the fireman, in Bingcombe Tunnel, southern region. Oh, interesting, another IR, another... IRO location being referenced. The guard poked his head in the cab. Now what? He asked. Back to the station, said the fireman, taking charge and send for a banker. So the guard warned the signalman and they brought the train safely down. But Gordon, who had followed with a goods train, had saw what happened. And saw what happened. Gordon left his uh, freight cars and crossed over to James. I thought you could climb hills, he chuckled. James didn't answer. He had no steam. Oh, well, we live in Warren, said Gordon. We w- Oh, well, we live and learn, said Gordon. We live and learn. Never mind, little James. He went on kindly. I'm going to push behind. Whistle when you're ready. James waited till he had plenty of steam. Then, peep, peep, he called. Poo, 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 pull hard, puffed Gordon. We'll do it, puffed James. Pull hard, we'll do it. The engines puffed together. Clouds of smoke and steam towered from the snorting engines as they struggled up the hill. We can do it, puffed James. We will do it, puffed Gordon. The greasy rails sometimes made Gordon's wheels slip, but he never gave up. And presently, they reached the top. We've done it, we've done it, they puffed. Gordon stopped. Poo, poop, he whistled. Goodbye. Peep, peep, peep. Thank you, goodbye, answered James. Gordon watched the coaches wistfully till they were out of sight, then slowly he trundled back to his waiting freight cars. Down the mine. One day Gordon was at the jun not Gordon. One day Thomas was at the junction when Gordon shuffled in with some freight cars. Poof marked Thomas. What a funny smell. Can you smell a smell? I can't smell a smell, said Annie and Clarabelle. A funny, musty sort of smell, said Thomas. No one noticed it till you did, grunted Gordon. It must be yours. Annie, Clarabelle, do you know I think I, do you know what I think it is? whispered Thomas loudly. It's ditch water. Gordon snorted, but before he could answer, Thomas puffed quickly away. Annie and Clarabelle could hardly believe their ears. Wait, they have ears. Anyway, he's dreadfully rude. I feel quite ashamed. I feel quite ashamed. He's dreadfully rude, they twittered to each other. You mustn't be rude. You make us ashamed, they kept telling Thomas, but Thomas didn't care. That was funny. That was funny, he chuckled. He felt very pleased with himself. Annie and Clarabelle were deeply shocked. They had great respect for Gordon, the big engine. Thomas left the coaches at a station and went to a mine for some freight cars. Long ago, miners digging for lead had made tunnels under the ground. Through strong, I mean, though strong enough to hold up freight cars, their roofs could not bear the weight of engines. A large notice said, Danger! Engines must not pass this board! Thomas had been, and Thomas had often been warned, but he didn't care. Silly old board, he thought. He had often tried to pass it, but had never succeeded. This morning, Tom, uh, bleh, this morning, he laughed as he puffed along. He had made a plan. He had to push empty freight cars into one siding and pull out full ones from another. His driver stopped him and the fireman went to turn the switches. Come on, waved the fireman and they started. The driver leaned out of the cab to see where they were going. 
Now, said Thomas to himself, and bumping the freight cars fiercely, he jerked his driver off the footplate. Well, that's interesting. In the episode, it, it mentioned, and the narrator mentions how Thomas jerked his driver and fireman off the footplate. Interesting. Hurrah, laughed Thomas, and he followed the freight cars into the siding. Stupid old board, said Thomas as he passed it. There's no danger, there's no danger. His driver, unhurt, jumped up. Look out, he shouted. The fireman clambered into the cab. Thomas squealed crossly as his brakes were applied. It's quite safe, he hissed. Come back, yelled the driver. But before they could move, there were rumbling and the rails quivered. The fireman jumped clear. As he did so, the ballast slipped away and the rails sat and sagged and broke fire and smoke said thomas i'm sunk and he was thomas and could just see out of the hole but he couldn't move oh dear he said i am a silly engine and a very naughty one too said a voice behind him i saw you please get get me out i won't be naughty again i'm not so sure replied sir topham hat we can't lift you out with a crane the ground's not firm enough. Hmm. Let me see. I wonder if Gordon could pull you out. Yes, sir, said Thomas nervously. He didn't want to meet Gordon just yet. Down a mine, is he? Ho, 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 left Gordon. What a joke, what a joke, he chortled, puffing to the rescue. Poo, poop, little Thomas, he whistled. We'll have you out in a couple of puffs. Strong cables were fastened between the two engines. Poo, poo, poop, are you ready? Heave, called to Topham Hat. But they didn't pull Thomas out in two puffs. Gordon was panting hard and nearly purple before he dragged Thomas out of the hole and safely past the board. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Thomas. That's all right, Thomas. You made me laugh. I like that. I'm in disgrace, Gordon went on pathetically. I feel very well. I'm in disgrace too, said Thomas. Why, so you are, Thomas. We're both in disgrace. Shall we form an alliance? A L-I- what was it? An alliance, Thomas. United we stand, together we fall, said Gordon grandly. You help me, and I'll help you. How about it? Right you are, said Thomas. Good, that settled, rumbled Gordon, and buffer to buffer the allies puffed home. Paint pots and queens. The engines were on the line, being painted. The engines were surprised. The queen is coming, said the painters. The engines in their shed were excited and wondered who would pull the royal train. I'm too old to pull important trains, said Edward sadly. I'm in disgrace, Gordon said gloomily. Sir Topham Hatt would never choose me. He'll choose me, of course, boasted James the Red Engine. You, Henry snorted, you can't climb hills. He will ask me to pull it, and I shall have a new coat of paint. You wait and see. The days passed. Henry puffed... I'm bleh. Henry puffed about proudly, quite sure that he would be the royal engine. One day when it rained, his driver and fireman stretched a tarpaulin, British for tarp, from the cab to the tender of I mean, from the cab to the tender to keep themselves dry. Henry puffed into the big station. A painter was climbing a ladder above the line. Henry's smoke puffed upwards. It was thick and black. The painter choked and couldn't see. He missed his footing on the ladder, dropped his paint pot, and fell plop onto Henry's tarpaulin. The paint poured over Henry's boiler and trickled down each side. The paint pot perched on his dome. The painter clambered down and shook his brush at Henry. You spoil my clean paint with your dirty smoke, he said. And then you take the whole lot and make me go fetch some more. He stumped crossly away. So Topham Matt pushed through the crowd. You looked like an iced cake, Henry, he said. That won't do for the royal train. I must make other arrangements. He walked over to the yard. Gordon and Thomas saw him coming and both began to speak. Please, sir, one at a time, smiled Sir Topham Hatt. Yes, Gordon. May Thomas have his branch line again? Hmm, said, his, said Sir Topham Hatt. Well, Thomas, please, sir, can Gordon pull coaches now? Sir Topham Hatt pondered. Hmm. You both have been quite good lately, and you deserve a treat. When the queen comes, Edward will go in front and clear the wine. Thomas will look after the coaches, and Gordon will pull the train. Oh, sir, said the engines happily. The great day came. Percy, Toby, Henry, and James worked hard bringing people to the town. Thomas sorted all their coaches in the yard. Peep, 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 they're coming, Edward steamed in. Looking smart with flags and bright paint, two minutes past five, seven, ten... 
poop, poop. Everyone knew that whistle, and a mighty cheer went up as the Queen's train glided into the station. Gordon was spotless and his brass shined. Like Edward, he was decorated with flags, but on his buffer beam, he proudly carried the, carried the royal arms. The Queen was met by Sir Topham Hatt, and before doing anything else, she thanked him for their splendid run. Not at all, your majesty, he said. Thank you. We have read, said the Queen of Sir Topham Hatt, a great deal about your engines. May we see them, please? So he led the way to where all the engines were waiting. Peep, peep, whistled Toby and Percy. They're coming. Shh, 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 hissed Henry and James. But Toby and Percy were too excited to care. Sir Topham Hatt told the Queen their names, and she talked to each engine. Then she turned to go, and then she turned to go. Percy bubbled over. Three cheers for the Queen, he called. Peep, 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 whistled all the engines. Sir Topham Hatt held his ears, but the Queen, smiling, waved to the engines till, till she passed the gate. The next day, the Queen spoke specially to Thomas, who fetched her coaches, and to Edward and Gordon, who took her away. I... And no engines ever felt prouder than Thomas, Edward, and Gordon, the big engine. Well, that's interesting. That line was changed in the episode, saying no engines ever felt prouder than the ones on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. Or Fat Controller's railway, depending on which dub you watched. Anyway, that is interesting. Alright, that is the end of today's story stops. If you want to see another video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll talk to y'all in the next one.